guys, it's me, Leticia. Um, today is Saturday, July 1st. Happy July. Um, just doing a quick little update because I had an adventure today. Um, on Boss's Day, back in October of 2016, obviously, um, on Boss's Day, my team surprised me with a gift card to my local needle workshop, the Stitching Post. So I've had this gift certificate in my wallet the whole time. Um, so that tells you how long it's been since I've been to my LNS. Um, and then for Mother's Day, my husband and stepdaughter also gave me a gift card. So these two gift certificates combined um, had a, a you know pretty nice amount of money that was just burning a hole, a hole in my pocket. Um, so today I went to my local needle workshop and I got to get a bunch of things. Um, so I used up all of my gift certificates, obviously, um, and I still had to contribute a little bit, but nothing close to what I would have spent um, if I used my own funds. So, um, so the, today I decided I was gonna go to the LNS and I was chatting with Tracy P a little bit earlier and she asked me she said so what do you have in mind to get and I said well I'm feeling like fabric I'm feeling like long dog samplers and I'm feeling like threads that's what I wanted I wanted fabric I wanted to kit up um, the new life after death from long dog sampler and castles in the air so I wanted the fabric and the threads for those two projects <clears throat> so we were sitting there talking about color palettes and maybe about, um, I don't know how long ago it was, but it was within the last year, um, Dinky Dyes had a sale where they were selling their, they were selling hanks of um, skeins of silk. And I think the hanks were like $20. It was ridiculous because you know how much it costs for one little teeny skein of Dinky Dyes silk. So this whole entire hank was $20. So I bought three of them at the time um, one was in a charcoal colorway, one was in like an olive green, subtly variegated colorway, and the other was in a more heavily variegated rust and um, peach and different shades of red and orange in that family. So when I was chatting with Tracy P, I said, well, I have the charcoal and I have the um, olive green. And typically when I do these large monochromatic patterns or when I plan to do them anyway I tend to lean toward doing one color um, but I really appreciate like the different um, variations there are on these types of projects like you know Emily's death by cross stitch is just ridiculous it's just brilliant and she has all different colors and they all work they all work she's magically bringing them together um, and I'm not 100% sure that I could do that. So Tracy was helping me to pick out different accent colors, you know, to make it pop because she suggested that I, you know, step outside the box and, you know, step away from just the monochromatic because it does get a little bit of boring. boring. So she was, you know, giving me suggestions to do a pop of color here and there, which is fine. So she was showing me pictures of different types of color palettes that um, would complement my gray and my olive so we're going through these you know changing different pictures and everything and um, I pretty much come up with an idea of what colors I wanted to use based off what you know idea she was giving me so that's what I did I went to the LNS and I picked out my colors and I'm gonna flip the camera around in a bit and I'm gonna show you everything because I'm very excited about it. and then I found this huge pattern from Perman of Copenhagen huge sampler pattern and it was eleven dollars these things these patterns are normally pretty expensive something that size is usually easy 20 25 higher usually pretty expensive i found it for eleven dollars and i liked it so i got it i got that and i got a piece of fabric um for that as well i really went outside the box this time with my fabric choices um including a 36 count which i typically don't do um, but I did I have two different options for castles in the air, which I'll share with you. Um, but for 
the Permenhagen. Permenhagen? I just made that up. It's Permen of Copenhagen. So for that piece, that pattern, um, I chose a 40 count linen. So that should be something. Um, but it's in doubloon. And you guys, it's mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing how differently doubloon looks on a 40 count Newcastle linen. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Like I've had doubloon in Ada. Um, and I believe I've had it in a even weave. But on that 40 count Newcastle. Whole new ball game. It's so pretty. Um, I also looked for the skein of Havana that I talked about in my last video. I was talking about the um, Courtney Collection Peacock pattern that Emily gifted me for my birthday. And I was talking about the ideas that I had for the plumage in this tail. Um, and that I ordered Dinky Dyes Havana. Um, based off of what the image was on one, two, three stitch. And you know, that could easily go awry. Um, but the Dickie Dyes was on sale and the colorway looked like what I wanted for a peacock's tail feather. Um, so I looked for it inside the LNS to see what it would look like in person. And unfortunately they didn't have it. I, I didn't even see um, a place for it. So I didn't get to see it. Um, so we have to wait until Monday. I think the package is gonna be delivered from one, two, three stitch. So still no update on what Havana looks like, um, but I do have an update on the Peacock. Um, apparently there are, not apparently, but in the Domin Dominican Republic, there are a lot of Peacocks there. My husband and I went to Punta Cana in 2015 and outside of our villa, there were peacocks everywhere. I mean, I have pictures of the peacock standing right in front of me and the peacock opening its tail in full bloom. It's amazing. It's amazing to see that. Like they are truly magical creatures. They are just gorgeous creatures and they were everywhere, everywhere, all over the, all over the resort. Um, so that being said, I have given the peacock a name also in honor of the person that gifted it to me. So the peacock is Dominican and his name is Emil because he's named after Emily. So there you go. The peacock's name is Emil. Um, and I think that's all of the update that I have. We just had a major, major, major rainstorm here um, to the point where everybody was pulling over on the side. I was coming home in it. Unfortunately, I was driving in it. Um, where you couldn't even see in front of you. People had to put on their hazard lights. People were pulling off to the side of the road. It was a downpour of epic proportions where you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. It was, well, what makes more sense is you couldn't even see the car in front of you. Um, but now the sun is shining and the sky is crystal clear like nothing ever happened, so whatever. But I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you my goods, all right? Talk to you in a minute. Hi guys, I'm back. Just wanted to flip the camera around so I could show you things with both my hands. So I'm just gonna put this folder right here so it's easier for you to see what I'm showing you. Um, this is one of the skeins of silk that I ordered from Dinky Dyes. Um, so I don't know off the top of my head how much silk this actually is, but word on the street is this is enough to do death by cross stitch and then some. Um, so this is what the hank looks like in its original form. This is how you received it. This is also the main color that I'm gonna be using for castles in the air. Um, so I'm gonna put this to the side for a minute just to talk about something really quick. So this is the other hank of silk. Um, it's a very subtly variegated olive green. So I have unwound it and I'm getting ready to um, completely unwind it. 
and I don't know if I'm going to put it in one big ball, if I'm going to separate it into separate little skeins, which is probably what I'm going to do now that I'm thinking about it. But here's the question that I have for America right now, and well, the world actually, because you know, Floss Tube is international. <sighs> when you get this skein in this form and you unwind it so it becomes like this, I would love anybody out there in Floss Tube land to record a video on how they unwind the hank and get it into the sections because even with a, this might be a good um request for yarn enthusiasts as well jesse marie i'm calling you out um because i know that you like some of these skeins that come um in this form and you know i don't know if you take it to the yarn the local yarn shop to have it unwound. I used to have a um, a winder, but like an idiot, I gave it away. So when you get the skeins, or, or anybody for that matter, I'm just calling Jessie out because I know she knits a lot, but anybody that receives hanks of yarn this way, can you possibly record a video on how you unwind it? Because every single time I try to unwind a skein of yarn, a hank of yarn that comes like this, it's a hot mess. It becomes knotted up every single time. So I'm a little bit nervous about breaking this down, um, but I'm going to do it in sections, which I think might be best for me. Slow and steady wins the race, and then I'll pop back in and show you what it looks like when I'm done. Um, but this is the olive green colorway that I'm using as the main color for Life After Death. And this is the main colorway that I'm using for um, Castles in the Air. Now, earlier I talked about the third hank that I got that I don't know what I'm going to do with. This is what it looks like. So you can see there are, it's melon colors, it's browns, it's actually very beautiful. Mel melon colors, browns, um, rusts, rust colors. But I thought this might be a little bit too much for these um patterns that I'm working with right now so I put this to the side but I just wanted to show that to you so here we go um so like I said I went to the LNS and I was trying to figure out what fabrics I wanted to use for these two particular patterns so the first one we'll look at is castles in the air so this is castles in the air um as you can see it is a monochromatic pattern but we're going to change it up a little bit it's kind of funny when you look at this because you would automatically think that the stitched part is the maroon on the pattern, but no, the stitched part is actually anywhere that you see white. So I had to kind of wrap my head around <laughs> looking at this because normally, I'll show you, like, life after death, the dominant color is the color that you're actually stitching when you see these patterns. That's not the case in this pattern. So the dominant color is this maroonish color but that is actually the background. The stitched part is the white. So this is going to be castles in the sky. The castles are going to be gray. So the gray is going to be the main color. So when I was talking to Tracy P earlier, the question was, what color do I want the fabric to be? I knew I wanted it to be a neutral. And typically, I will go to the very light shades of neutral 28 count, 25 count, because I plan to do it one over one, or at least I did plan to do it that way. So I went to the LNS and I found this, um, which one am I talking about guys? Castles, castles in the air, right? That's the gray one, right? Yes. So I went to my LNS and I found this piece of 28 count Joblin in light gray. Very nice, right? So this is light gray and I will show you the accent colors that I got as well. So this is how the charcoal or silvery, um, silk looks on the light gray pattern. And these are the accents, the light gray fabric. These are the accent colors that I chose. I chose the, I'm going to say this wrong, in Janet told me how to say this properly, but I'm going to mess it up because it was so long ago I forgot. Soi de jour? I don't know. I'm not going to say it again because that was kind of awkward. I said it wrong. So I got this color 
in a royal blue. This is $13.45, nice royal blue. Or purple, however you, you see that. This light, have my light on and it's playing tricks. Can you see that? There you go. That's it. It's a nice royal blue. Then I got um, Gentle Art Samplers in the Cinders colorway. So it's a nice deep plum, blackish red. Then I got uh, another Swall de Jar in number 205, which is a nice emerald green. Char uh, chartreuse color. This is number 514. And then a turquoise color, which is number 135. So that was the first option for castles in the air. Then I found in 36 count sand in. This is a 36 count Edinburgh linen and I thought sand castles. I thought the you know that one together and I kind of like how the colors pop off of sand dune a little bit better when I do the toss floss. They seem to pop a little bit better. So that's, I think I'm going with this one for castles in the air, just to show you again. That's this one by Long Dog Samplers. So the second pattern that I was looking to kit up today was Life After Death. And I guess this is the sequel to Death by Cross Stitch. Equally busy and fabulous. So for Life After Death, Again, I went with the neutral tone because it's an olive green. It's variegated. I just wanted to settle fabric. So I went with good old fashioned 25 count Lugana in cream or ivory, whatever you want to call it. And this is with the olive green. I love it. And then I got more of the Soir de Jure, whatever silks. This one is like a deep teal. Not unlike the other one, but a little different. This is a deep plum. And these colors are showing up pretty true to life here, guys. A silvery, oh, it's more of a dark charcoal. Mustardy yellow. And then another Gentle Light Samplers in Nutmeg. So this is the color, these are the colors I'm going to use for Life After Death. Okay. And finally, this was the pattern that I was telling you about, the Permit of Copenhagen. I hope you can see this without much of a glare. This pattern, this sampler, look how busy that is, how detailed. All of this down here, look at all that. You guys know I love a busy pattern. This huge pattern, and I mean this is several pages. This is like like a, a book of pages, like a four and a forest group, kind of like that. Eleven dollars. You know these patterns are normally like twenty, thirty dollars. This was eleven dollars. Even the cashier at the LNS mentioned that. I was like, I know, and it's gorgeous. So with this pattern, I kind of stepped outside the box and I purchased a half yard of 40 count Newcastle in the doubloon colorway. And I'm going to try to spread this out as much as I possibly can so you can appreciate the fantastic beauty of this fabric. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, seriously. And that's pretty true. That's 
yeah it's more of it looks a little bit lighter in the picture in, in the on the screen but um what is this the color of it's like a mixture of the color of a manila folder and a latte that's it it's like a latte it's just like a latte there you go so but the modeling in this fabric gosh that was amazing now i can honestly say that this piece of fabric by itself is where the gift certificates really came in handy because this was not a cheap cut of fabric but this was completely covered by my gift certificate so it was that's why i said i've had adventures today and it was a complete and total splurge um so i called my husband on my way back and i thanked him again you know for his gift certificates and I'll, I, I think i'm gonna thank my team on monday but i'm almost ashamed to say that i waited all this time to use it but it wasn't because i didn't want to use it it was i guess i was saving it up for a rainy day and it rained today so there you go i saved it up for a rainy day so yeah i will thank my team again for that because those two gift cards together i mean that got almost this entire haul i had to add to it but still there's no way i would have gotten all of this um for what I paid out of pocket. So that was my haul today. It was, I had a wonderful time. Um, and I got exactly what I wanted. So what I think I'm going to end up doing is shutting this down, getting good and cozy and do a little stitching. Um, so I guess in my next update, you'll find out what I got started on, unless you see it on Facebook first, which you probably will. Um, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time. All right, you guys. The hank has been broken down. Um, let me tell you how long it took. I got home, I think, around 4, maybe 5 I started. Not really sure. But I binge-watched... Four of the beaded, the beaded Stitchers videos. I watched all of Emily's um, vintage chart unboxing. And half of the Buckeye Stitchers latest video. It took hours to break this down. But here's what we have. There's my pile. And each pile has, I don't know how many lengths, but about this many, however many that is, what, it could be 40, 40 lengths, maybe more, 50, I don't know, um, about 18 inches long. So that's a lot of thread just in this one bunch. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those bunches um so each of these bunches is contains 18 inch lengths give or take and each bunch has about that many i don't know i didn't count them i just kind of you know fingered it um strands and these are are they six plies or 12 plies. I think there's six plies. Yeah, there's six plies, I'm sure. So that's 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 a whole lot of silk for $20. But my God, if somebody can please post a video on how they break that hank down, because I don't know if that should have taken four to five hours, but it did. So I would like to thank the bearded stitcher, Emily, and the Buckeye Stitcher for keeping me great company because it is now dark outside. I haven't eaten dinner. You know, the whole world just passed me by and I broke, was breaking down this hank of silk. Um, but I didn't lose any of it. I know I posted a quick little snippet of um, my progress mid-battle. The struggle was real. Um, but I didn't lose any of it. <clears throat> I cut out the knot here and there, but I didn't lose any major inches of silk um so that's my big hank all broken down um so i guess with that being said it is very safe to say
that whatever I start, it's probably going to be um, life after death because I'm not mentally ready to take on the silver hank anytime soon. So there's that. Talk to you later. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I just want to say again, every single time, I'm so frustrated. That's all. When I woke up, I remember I woke up and when the hand, wherever the hand was touching me on the back of my shoulder, I saw a Bible verse. Um, and I don't remember, I know it was part of the book of James, and I want to say it was the book of James chapter 14, something like that. Um, but whatever the Bible verse was, and some of you may know this, it was saying something about don't despair from what's happening today. Just remember that there will always be tomorrow. And whatever it was, when I woke up, I said it out loud. I said the Bible verse out loud. And I'm not a very, I'm not a religious person like that. I'm not one of those people that knows um, by the Bible verses, you know, from memory. I was not raised in the church. I don't, I don't know these things, you know, that's by heart. Um, but when I woke up, I said this Bible verse out loud. And I knew it was a Bible verse. So when I went to it and I read that, to me, that was somebody telling me it's going to be okay. It was, it was so random. The second time, um... I was sleeping and oh I forgot to tell you that when I fell asleep I was only asleep for five minutes but it felt like I was sleeping for hours I was only out for five minutes that's it um, the other thing was I was sleeping and I was living by myself at the time and I felt something like caress my cheek and I opened my eyes and I saw this hand pull away and I jumped out of bed like, like you would if you had an intruder in your house standing over you. I, I immediately reacted. Um, but I saw the hand pull away. But it was like a translucent, translucent hand. It wasn't like that. It was the, the image of a hand. It, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, and when I realized that nobody was there, I said out loud, I said, whoever you are, I love you. I know you love me, but I don't want to see you um, because I believed it was somebody coming to visit me that loved me. Um, so those were my two incidents there. Uh, let's see. <sighs> Number 15. <laughs> when my brother and I were kids, anytime we had takeout or we went out to a restaurant, whether it be McDonald's or a fancy restaurant, it was a special occasion. It was a big deal because we didn't do that. We didn't do takeout. My my mother cooked. My mother cooked. My father cooked. We ate what we, what was cooked in our own and fed to us. Um, so anytime we had takeout or we went out to dinner, it was a big deal. So whenever we got, I don't know why we did this, and I I, I know this is as nerdy as it gets, but whenever we got Chinese food, it was fancy to us to my brother and I, and we used to make pretend, like when we were eating our dinner, our fancy Chinese food, we would make pretend that we were in like a business meeting. And we would act out having an important business meeting because we were eating fancy food. I don't know. But we used to always act like we were having, playing like we were in a fancy business meeting because we had Chinese food. Whatever, y'all did it too, don't judge. Nobody did that. Um, number 16, um, my father ruined roller coasters for me for life. I am deathly afraid of heights and roller coasters. Um, when I was a kid and we went to Disney World in Florida, we went on Space Mountain. And my father was sitting next to me in the car. And when the lights went out and the little star lights came on, he was in my ear like, ooh, it's dark, don't fall out of the car, don't fall out, make sure your seatbelt's on, you know, saying all the things that no father should ever say to their little child ever in life when on a roller coaster. 
um, but he chose that opportunity to do that. And when that roller coaster started, it was no, it was no help. He had to carry me out. I was screaming. I was crying. I was embarrassing. But he had to carry me out of there when that roller coaster ended. I couldn't even walk. Um, and I've been scared of roller coasters ever since. And when he was alive, he would still tell that story because he just thought it was the funniest thing ever. And it really was not. Not at all. It's awful. Number 17, I prefer the taste of diet sodas over regular. I always have. And my favorite diet soda is Diet A&W Root Beer. I'm addicted. <sighs> Number 18, um, when I was in junior high school, I had a problem with cutting my hair. Um, not just my hair up here, but I actually shaved off my eyebrows and cut off my eyelashes. I cannot explain to you why I did these things. I only did it once because if you've ever shut off, shaved off your eyebrows and cut off your eyelashes, like I'm sure most of you have, you know what it looks like. Um, but I did that. And I also cut my bangs. I decided I wanted bangs and my mother wouldn't let me have them so I cut them myself. And I cut them like up here. So my bangs were like right here that short and she made me go to school. Never did it again. Um, number 19, I've been mistaken for the singer Jill Scott twice to the point where people freaked out because they thought I was her. Um, the first time was on a cruise ship with my girlfriends. We went to Cozumel, Mexico and we were on the elevator and this woman got on the elevator and she kept looking at me and looking away and looking at me and looking away. And she was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just, I've never met anybody famous before. And I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I just love your music. And I'm looking at her like, okay, so who do you think I am? And she says, Jill Scott. And I was like, no, my name is Letitia. <laughs> the second time was in the Atlanta airport. I was coming back. I think I was um, at a layover there from seeing my dad. And I was coming back and this woman walked up to me and she says, I'm sorry, I know you don't want to be bothered, but I just want to tell you, I just love you and I love your music. And it's a total compliment though, because Jill Scott is beautiful, so I will take it, but I'm most definitely not her. But that was funny. Number 20, we are at the end guys. I have a series of moles on my leg, on my inner left calf, that are in the shape of a smiley face. And I will insert a picture of that here. Um, so yeah, so those are my 20 random facts. I hope you enjoyed them. You probably know a lot more about me than a lot of people that know everything about me. So there you go. That was a really fun tag and I hope everybody does it. So that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye. Hey guys, it's me back for another update. Well, not really. Um, today I'm doing the 20 random things tag. Um, before I go into that, uh, my last update, let me just fix this. Um, my last update, I threw a question out there um, in regard to how people unwind or break down their hanks of floss and common sense failed me and I'm going to explain why and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about I'm going to do a live demonstration common sense failed me because I'm a knitter and a crocheter so when I get hanks of yarn I have to painstakingly unwind the whole entire hank to create one ball or um, one in, in the little specially wound cakes they call them to create one ball or one cake of yarn you have to unwind the whole thing so naturally when I got the hank of floss silk floss that's wound in the same exact manner that's what I did I unwound the entire thing and I painstakingly created eight small hanks of 18 inch lengths. Didn't measure them, just kind of eyeballed it. But this whole process took about four hours. 
And in my last update, I was asking, what do you guys do? You know, and I did a shout out to Jesse. Like, I know you're used to dealing with these hanks of yarn and you know how we have to unwind them. What do you do to unwind the hanks of floss? So I was talking to Tracy P about it. And when she told me what she did, I was, I just sat there. I just sat there because I'm going to show you. So keep in mind that when I broke down the hank of um, the olive floss that I showed in my last update, keep in mind it took me about four hours to break down this whole entire skein of floss and create these individual little hanks in 18 inch lengths. So this is my charcoal that I'm going to use for castles in the air. See this? Um, I'm going to do what Tracy told me to do. And I'm done. She said, why don't you just cut it at both ends? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just do that. The problem is when you're dealing with those hanks of yarn, it is unthinkable to cut it in half. It is unthinkable. So it never even dawned on me to just cut it at both ends of the loop and I'm done. I just did in 30 seconds. Not even that. 10 seconds. What it took me four hours to do yesterday. So at the risk of coming across and sounding like an, a complete idiot, but hopefully you will understand the logic that I use. You knitters and crocheters, you understand. You will understand why it never dawned on me to simply cut it at both ends. It just didn't even dawn on me. Um, but at the risk of sounding silly, I wanted to share that with you just in case there is another knitter out there, another crocheter, that got a hank of silk floss from Silk Freight for You or from Dinky Dyes and did the same foolishness that I did yesterday. You're welcome. Moving on. Um, so... I'm going to do the 20 random things tag, but I might as well just show you what I'm working on right now. Um, I'm in the middle of a four-day weekend. It's the holiday weekend for 4th of July. I have Monday off, so for me, it's a long holiday weekend. And I decided, since I'm off for four days, I was going to start um, one of the projects that I kitted up yesterday at the LNS and just work on that for four days straight because I have a lot of time and to see how far I get. So what I chose to work on was the Long Dog Samplers, Life After Death. And I show you the, the choices that I, the colorway that I, excuse me, that I wanted to use. And this is my progress. I just started it today, this morning really. So this is what I've done. Hello, Bella Butt. This is what I've done. <laughs> um, obviously there were other things going on, laundry, life, whatever. But this is my little start. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. I love the mustardy yellow or green or whatever you want to call it. I love the little, what is that? I was about to say it's an aardvark. I don't think it's an aardvark. I think it's a vulture. That is not an aardvark. I think it's a vulture. Um, I love the colors. I love how they're matching up already. I'm doing this one over one on 25 count Lugana um, in an ivory. And I'm really enjoying it. So this is what I'm going to be working on for the next few days while I'm off. And then I'll go back to my tribal monkey. Yeah. But anyway, that's what I'm working on. Um, I just picked up a box um, from the garage that was delivered from Amazon today. And there's some stitchy stuff in there, little things. So I'll show you what I got. Um, I got a pair of scissors. I don't see the brand name here. I don't see the brand name at all. But I will post in the link below um, the link to Amazon. They were only like $7.00. Look how pretty. Seven bucks. And crazy sharp. Like, like that needs a protector on the end of that. Crazy sharp. Look at that detail. Seven dollars, guys. Maybe seven ninety nine. Are those birds up there? What is that? No, they're not birds. But they had several different options to choose from. I chose the copper, but they also had silver, bright silver, like aluminum, brushed silver all different options but I chose the copper um, 
So that came, $7. I also found on Amazon a kit that I always enjoy when I see other people um, working on this kit, but it was marked down to like 12 bucks on Amazon. We all know this one. The Victorian Charm House. Love that. I don't know when I'll ever do it, but it was marked down so much. You know, it's one of those things. Um, my eyes itching. What else did I get from Amazon? Oh yeah. So Emily mentioned in her video, one of her last videos that she got, excuse me, my eyes itching. One of the videos um, that she recently uploaded, either her last one or the one before that, she mentioned the tags that she got to mark her um, multiple project bags. So she didn't have to open up the project to know what was in there. I thought that was rather brilliant. And she got like a whole bunch of little tags for like five bucks. I did the same thing. Um, there's 50 of them in here. It was like five dollars, five or six bucks. 50 of them. In this little white part, it has a plastic, clear plastic covering on there. So in order to write your project name, I'll show you. You have to undo the little key ring, which is super easy. And then see, this is Life After Death. 7117 is when I started it. And it's on there. And it's protected because of the little plastic piece. So I thought that was pretty smart. So I got a pack of those. Um, and for those of you that are into this kind of stuff, I got a multi-pack of Tunisian crochet hooks or Afghan hooks. Because I have an Afghan hook, but I have never, in all my years of crocheting, I've been crocheting since I was like eight, I have never seen a multi-pack with all these different sizes of Afghan hooks. So there are three, six, nine, ten, eleven different sizes in here, and it was, I think, like eleven ninety-nine. I've only seen an Afghan hook come in like maybe H and J, maybe. Um, but this has all of them, or at least like from as going down as low as. Two, three millimeters is the smallest, two millimeters even. It's amazing for $11.99. Hmm. So for those of you that are into that, I'll post that link below too. Um, that's all I got from Amazon, some little updates, but I did want to show you a Target find. It was in Target and I found this little manicure kit, rose gold manicure kit for five bucks. You know, throw it in your purse, whatever. It has a little emery board in there, a little nail clipper, toe clipper, um, cuticle pusher, cuticle trimmer, metal nail file, standard little kit for five bucks. Always a good deal, right? But it also came with these cuticle scissors. I never use cuticle scissors, but they are super sharp and they have a nice little curve, a nice little curved edge so you can really get up close to the fabric with these, like, like that, get really close in there. It's pretty brilliant. Five bucks. I have a rose gold pair of scissors. Five bucks at your local Target. Um, so I think that is it. So for the rest of this segment, I'm just going to do the 20 random things tag. And I'm also going to show you the mug that Emily got me. So this, oop, I want to move my hands. I can't do it on camera. There you go. This is the mug that she got me for my birthday that I mentioned with the two little owls sitting on the branch and I said that this was me and Emily. So, isn't that beautiful? I'm trying to be careful because it's chock full of coffee right now. So, let's get started. So, I wrote down my 20 things so I wouldn't be sitting here trying to figure it out. Um, so, number one. 20 random things about Letitia. Number one, um, I was on the front page of the Daily News. For those of you that are from New York, um, you are very familiar with the Daily News newspaper. Um, I was born in New York and um, spent several years living in New York and New Jersey before my family moved to Maryland. Um, so shout out to It Is Kismet, Jersey Girl. Um, but anyway, when I was a baby, there was a jewelry store robbery and the robber ran onto the subway. And because of the amount of um, jewelry that he stole, the subway was shut down. It was shut down to the point where um, the police came in 
he was found, he was arrested, and um, the fire department was there because they shut the subway down and they had to, um, they were helping some of the passengers off of the train because it was stopped, like literally in the middle um, of the subway tunnel. Um, so the firefighters were helping the passengers off the train and on the front page of the Daily News was my mother holding this little baby being helped by a firefighter. And that little baby was me. So I was on the front page of the Daily News. Number two, <clears throat> I won third place in a karaoke contest on Royal Caribbean cruise ship. We were sailing to the Bahamas, I think it was. My husband and I, my, my stepdaughter and uh, my niece. We went on a cruise to the Bahamas and they did karaoke every night and I absolutely love karaoke. Have microphone, we'll sing. Love it. So we were doing karaoke and they had a karaoke contest on one of the nights and I sang Last Dance by Donna Summer. And for those of you that would appreciate such a thing, I also incorporated some dance moves and twirled around like the queen that I am. And um, I won third place. So that was fun. Number three, when I was in elementary school, I always wanted braces. I thought braces were the coolest thing in the world. Um, I never had braces. I used to have a gap right here in the front of my teeth. And somehow the, my teeth shifted over the years. So the gap that was right here is now right here. So I never had braces, but I possibly needed them because now I have a gap right here. But whatever, other than that, my teeth are pretty straight. Long story short. So anyway, I used to always want braces, not because I needed them, but because I thought they were cool. So I used to, <laughs> being the special child that I was, I used to get aluminum foil and like fold it up really, really thin into really thin strips and slide it in my mouth so when I talk people could see the silver in my mouth um, so in my mind I was so cool that I think I invented the grills that people put in their mouth um, because back then it was early 80s people didn't have the grills back then so maybe I started that trend um, that's the story I'm gonna stick with <sighs> number four I used to be a superhero so, those of you that are of a certain age, if you will remember underoos. Underoos were the underwear that's fun to wear. Um, they had, it was underwear where you had the undershirt and you had the underwear um, that was designed with prints from superheroes costumes. Uh, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, Batgirl, any superhero you can think of that was on like the Justice League, DC Comics, Marvel, they had underoos for them. And my brother and I, we loved underoos. And when we put on our underoos, we didn't put them on like underwear, we put them on because we were playing superhero. And to the point where like if my brother was wearing his Batman underoos, we used to play like we had the Batmobile, but it wasn't a Batmobile. We had the butt mobile and we took we had these huge red dinner trays <laughs> oh I can't believe I'm telling you this we had these huge red dinner trays that we could sit on and we lived in a townhouse in Jersey and we would at the top of the steps we would bump down the steps on these dinner trays while singing the theme song to Batman so we would be going down the steps in our underoos on these dinner trays going da -na 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 Batman because we were cool like that um okay number five I won um in Baltimore there is a radio station called 95.9 95.9 plays like smooth jams from smooth R&B jams from back in the day while not as much, you know, like the more contemporary R&B. It plays a lot of old school music. So 95.9, listen to it all the time. And they have something called the 30 and over club card, where if you have your 30 and over club card, um, if you were going to different clubs or different areas, you would have a discount or you might be able to get in free of cover charge, things like that. So when I turned 30, I wanted my 30 and over club card. So I was in... 
um, Timonium. You guys in my area, you know Timonium. Right across the street from the fairgrounds. I was going somewhere, some type of ex expedition across the street from the fairgrounds. And the 95.9 truck was there. And um, I asked, how can I get a 30 and over club card? And the guy who was a DJ, he was live on the air at that time. He said, in order to get your 30 and over club card, I need you to freestyle live on the radio. Freestyle rap. I said, okay. And I did. And that's how I got my 30 and over club card. I freestyled on the radio and it was aired live. Um, but it was funny. Like, it's something, I don't know why, but it's something I could always do. Like, if you give me a subject, I can freestyle. And it's something I never do anymore. And so it's a little known secret. Um, but my girlfriends, they, they know I could do it. Like if we were going somewhere, if we were going to DC, you know, I would just start rapping. And it it's a hidden talent. Who knew? But anyway, and no, I'm not going to do it. So uh, number six, spaghetti is my favorite meal. It has been since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I can eat it every single day and um, I make homemade spaghetti sauce from scratch. I used to use like Prego and Ragu and all that because that's what we grew up with and one day I was watching the cooking channel um, years ago because I've been doing this for years now. I taught my husband how to make my sauce um, so that's all we do now. He knows how to make it too but I was watching the, ch the cooking channel and Jada De Laurentiis was showing how to make homemade authentic Italian spaghetti sauce and I tried it and over the years I have um, put the tish touch on it and made it my own and it's like the best spaghetti sauce ever made in life according to me and my family it's great um, and untouchable to me because we're the only ones that make homemade spaghetti sauce but if you've ever made homemade spaghetti sauce, you know there is a difference. But spaghetti is my favorite meal. I can eat it every single day. I love it, love it, love it. Um, number seven, I have um, a terrible fear of bugs. To the point where if one lands on me, there's going to be a performance. Um, when I was six or seven, we used to spend... Our summers in Mississippi with our grandparents, pretty much the whole summer. Um, and I was sitting on the, the front sun porch, it's screen, screened in sun porch with my cousins and we were playing a game of pity pat, card game for those of you that don't know. And I was sitting there holding my cards and my cousin said, there's something in your elbow. And I looked down and there was a wasp, fluttering wings, stuck in my skin. He stung me um, and I completely lost it. I mean, came undone. I'm surprised I didn't like bust through the screen. And I don't know if it was my anxiety, if I was so upset or the beast or the sting. I don't know if I'm allergic, but I broke out into hives. I could not, I was inconsolable. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've had this terrible fear of bugs. Um, most recently, my husband and I went to Jamaica and we were standing outside one of the little quote unquote clubs that was on the resort. And we were waiting for it to open because it was a karaoke. They were doing karaoke again with a karaoke, but we were waiting to get in because I think they opened up at nine or something and we were just standing there waiting. And it had just rained. So there was a lot of humidity in the air and there were all of these chairs and tables that were set up because there was something that was going on out in the pavilion a little bit earlier. So we're standing there and we're talking and I look over, I just happened to just look over, I don't remember if my husband said there was a bug on me, I don't know, but something told me to look on my shoulder and I looked on my shoulder and there was a pterodactyl sitting on my shoulder. It was the biggest bug I have ever seen in my life and I blacked out. I just took off running I knocked chairs over I just took off running with no destination in mind I just took off um and my husband didn't know what to do he said even he was scared of the bug it, it was a pterodactyl on my shoulder um but I blacked out I don't remember where I ran to I don't remember how the story ended I just remember I was crying I was very upset it was 
it was it was it was it was a mess it was a mess um so i'm scared to death of bugs to this day any any bug if don't don't i'm not the one to come to if there's a bug stuck on you don't come to me and say get it off me i'm not the one number eight um steve urkel from family matters is my spirit animal i love cheese i love cheese my favorite cheese is monster i just love cheese um number nine i love rick astley rick astley is a singer from the 80s he was out of sight for 27 years um until recently nobody heard from him 27 years but when he was out in the 80s he had late 80s yeah, it was late 80s, because I think he went away in like 87, 89, something like that. I don't remember. But anyway, um, he had two big hits, Never Gonna Give You Up and Together Forever. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. That was one. And then Together Forever and Never Two Part. That, yeah, whatever. Um, so Rick Astley is a British guy with a shock of red hair. And I just remember watching him, if you guys remember Night Tracks. Um, it used to be night tracks and Friday night videos. It was before MTV, VH1 came out playing videos. They had night tracks and Friday night videos that played music videos all night on Friday night, like up until the wee hours of the morning. And I used to stay up and watch them. And this one night, once again in Mississippi with my cousins, I was in the kitchen and I heard this song playing from the living room because we were watching one of the two, Friday night videos or night tracks. And I heard this song and this guy with this deep voice singing. And I was like, who is that? What is that song? And I ran out into the living room and there was Rick Astley on the TV with his deep baritone voice stealing my heart. Um, and I loved him so much. And if you can imagine um, back then, it was, I was probably the only girl of my age that liked Rick Astley. And I had I Love Rick Astley written all over my binder. I was in the seventh grade, I remember, and I walked into my Spanish class. And with Rick Astley all over my binder, the only person that I ever remember bonding with over Rick Astley was the seventh grade substitute Spanish teacher. Um, and it was not cool, guys. It was not cool. Um, but she saw I Love Rick Astley all over my binder, and she was like, oh my god, I love Rick Astley too. And I immediately knew that there was something terribly wrong with with my choice um but it was okay I love him to this day and he came out of hiding after 27 years and he came to the United States to do a um, U.S. tour and I got to see him I me and my husband we drove all the way to Philadelphia to go see Rick Astley and I converted him he is now a fan because that is a talented talented man and he put on a fantastic show we went to go see him valentine's day weekend um or the weekend right before after valentine's day i don't remember valentine's day felt one weekend but that was a highlight in my life loved him excellent concert number 10 um just like dina i nearly drowned as well we were in long island um with some family friends when I was a kid and we were at a lake and we were swimming and all of the adults were on the beach and my brother and um, the family friends, their, their kids, we were all swimming in the lake and I know how to swim. Um, but I went out a little too far and the next thing I knew I couldn't feel the ground under me and I panicked. And I was going down and I came back up and I was reaching out and I was grabbing, just grabbing for somebody. Um, and it was one of those things where I don't re think people realize that I was, I, I lost control. Um, and I felt that panic settling in to the point where I remember thinking I'm drowning. And I reached out and I grabbed again and I grabbed again and somebody realized I was in trouble and they helped me and pulled me up and got me to shore and I stayed out for the rest of the day. And that was it. Number 11, um, I'm very ashamed to admit this, but it has a happy ending. I used to be a smoker. Um, I used to smoke Virginia Slim menthol ultralight from the time 
I've been smoking since I was 16 years old. I was a victim of peer pressure. I used to always say I would never smoke, I'd never drink, and da 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 with my nose in the air and on a hill in my best friend's backyard with two other people. I was peer pressured at 16 years old into smoking my first cigarette because I wouldn't be cool if I didn't. Whatever. So I smoked from 16 years old up until two years ago. And two years ago, again, when we came back from the cruise at the Bahamas, um, it was on this day, my husband and I, we came back, my husband used to be a smoker too, we came back to Baltimore and we stopped smoking on the same day. Just like that. Um, haven't touched a cigarette since. So it can be done. Um, but I I just, I'm, I used to be so ashamed of it. Like people at work never knew because I would never, I would never smoke in the car if somebody else was in there with me. Um, my stepdaughter has never seen me smoke. Um, I think she knew, but she's never seen me. I would never smoke in front of her, um, not in the house. I was just ashamed of it because obviously, you know, but I'm not judging anybody that does, but it was, you know, everybody knows it's like bad for your health and all that. Um, and I was ashamed of the fact that I was doing it anyway. So, but that's a happy ending. My husband and I quit on the same day and it's been two years and that's that. Um, number 12, I am annoying when I think I'm right. I have this thing. My father used to tell us to never believe what somebody's telling you simply because they're saying it. No matter who the source is, you find out for yourself. You do the research, you educate yourself and, um, You find out whatever you need to know to, to make your decision, make an educated decision. You don't just believe what people tell you. So if I am convinced that I am right about something, um, because usually if I say I'm right, I have reason to believe it. If somebody is saying something that is what I don't believe to be correct, I am extremely annoying because I will question them about it and just ask clarifying questions. Not because I'm trying to prove you wrong. I'm not trying to be obnoxious and prove you wrong. But in order for me to buy what you're telling me, you need to convince me that you're right. And it's very annoying. It's not meant to be, it's not a, an attractive quality. It's just how my mind works. Like. If you tell me that, you know, I don't know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but if something that you're telling me that I just don't agree with, that I don't believe to be true, I'll just ask a lot of clarifying questions to the point where it's, you like don't want to talk to me anymore. My girlfriends have told me it's very, very annoying. Um, my husband hasn't, but I'm quite sure he knows what I'm talking about. Um, number 13, I used to do open mic poetry. Um, I used to write poems all the time and I would go to open mic night and I would read them. Um, this started with something that was called Poetology that used to happen the first Sunday of every month. Um, and my girlfriend and I would go to poet Poetology and they would play, they would start off with like a jazz brunch kind of thing. And then it would lead into open mic where people would come up and they would do read their poetry or they would come up and read, um, not read, but they would come up and play music or they would sing. It would be just an opportunity to express yourself. Um, and it was wonderful. And if you guys remember the show Hill Street Blues, um, oh my God, no, it wasn't Hill Street Blues. Yeah, he was on Hill Street Blues. I can't remember the name of the actor. He was one of the cops. You'll know him. If I find a picture, I'll insert it here. Um, but I got to hear him read one of his poems that he wrote at this little coffee bar. It was so random. And I will never forget the poem was called Yellow Pants. And he was like, you know, he was reading the poem. And my girlfriend and I, we were laughing. We were not trying to be rude. We were just... It was funny because he kept saying, yellow pants, yellow pants. And it was too much for us to handle. It was too much 
he was too serious. About, he was way too serious to be saying yellow pants like that so many times. And we started busting out laughing and it was, I felt horrible because that's the worst thing you could possibly do. But it was one of those, you ever have one of those moments where you're laughing uncontrollably at a completely inappropriate time? That was it. So, um, where was I? Number 14. I do believe I've been visited by spirits on two separate and distinct occasions. Um, I do believe in that stuff, but I have two situations where I believe I was visited by the spirit of somebody that loved me. That's what I believe. Um, the first time I was, I want to say it was a time when I think when my husband and I were dating, I think we broke, we had broken up at one point and I was heartbroken. I was devastated. And I think it was him because I was crying. I was crying so deeply and I could not stop. I was, I was hurt to the core of my being. And I was crying so deeply that all I wanted to do, I just wanted the pain to stop. I just wanted, I just wanted to stop crying. So I laid down and somehow I felt like I, you know, you used to cry yourself to sleep when you were a kid. It was kind of like that. I immediately fell asleep. I just laid down and put my head down and I just was out. And I think I was dreaming. I thought I was dreaming at the time. Because in my dream, I could see myself laying on the bed, laying on my stomach. Um, and I could see this hand just touch my shoulder. As if to put its, you know, somebody will touch the back of your shoulder and you know it's okay that kind of thing and I saw this hand just come down and pat the back of my shoulder and when I woke up I remember I woke up and when the hand wherever the hand was touching me on the back of my shoulder I saw a bible verse um and I don't remember I know it was part of the book of James and I want to say it was book of James chapter 14 something like that um but whatever the bible verse was and some of you may know this it was saying something about don't despair from what's happening today just remember that there will always be tomorrow and whatever it was when i woke up i said it out loud i said the bible verse out loud and i'm not a very i'm not a religious person like that i'm not one of those people that knows um, by the Bible verses, you know, from memory, I was not raised in the church. I don't, I don't know these things, you know, that's by heart. Um, but when I woke up, I said this Bible verse out loud and I knew it was a Bible verse. So when I went to it and I read that, to me, that was somebody telling me it's going to be okay. It was, it was so random. The second time, um, I was sleeping and Oh, I forgot to tell you that when I fell asleep, I was only asleep for five minutes, but it felt like I was sleeping for hours. I was only out for five minutes. That's it. Um, the other thing was I was sleeping and I was living by myself at the time and I felt something like caress my cheek and I opened my eyes and I saw this hand pull away and I jumped out of bed like like you would if you had an intruder in your house standing over you. I, I immediately reacted. Um, but I saw the hand pull away, but it was like a translucent, translucent hand. It wasn't like that. It was the, the image of a hand. It, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, and when I realized that nobody was there, I said out loud, I said, whoever you are, I love you. I know you love me, but I don't want to see you. Um, because I believed it was somebody coming to visit me that loved me. Um, so those were my two incidents there. Uh, let's see. <sighs> Number 15. <laughs> when my brother and I were kids, anytime we had takeout or we went out to a restaurant, whether it be McDonald's or a fancy restaurant, it was a special occasion. It was a big deal because... We didn't do that. We didn't do takeout. My my mother cooked. My mother cooked. My father cooked. We ate what we, what was cooked in our own and fed to us. Um, so anytime we had takeout or we went out to dinner, it was a big deal. So 
whenever we got, I don't know why we did this, and I, I, I know this is as nerdy as it gets, but whenever we got Chinese food, it was fancy to us, to my brother and I, and we used to make pretend, like when we were eating our dinner, our fancy Chinese food, we would make pretend that we were in like a business meeting. <laughs> we would act out having an important business meeting because we were eating fancy food. <laughs> I don't know. But we used to always act like we were having, playing like we were in a fancy business meeting because we had Chinese food. Whatever. Y'all did it too. Don't judge. Nobody did that. Um, number 16. Um, my father ruined roller coasters for me for life. I am deathly afraid of heights and roller coasters. Um, when I was a kid and we went to Disney World in Florida, we went on Space Mountain. And my father was sitting next to me in the car and when the lights went out and the little star lights came on he was in my ear like Ooh, it's dark don't fall out of the car don't fall out make sure you see what's on you know saying all the things that no father should ever say to their little child ever in life when on a roller coaster um but he chose that opportunity to do that and when that roller coaster started it was no it was no help he had to carry me out I was screaming, I was crying, I was embarrassing, but he had to carry me out of there when that roller coaster ended. I couldn't even walk. Um, and I've been scared of roller coasters ever since. And when he was alive, he would still tell that story because he just thought it was the funniest thing ever. And it really was not. Not at all. It's awful. Number 17, I prefer the taste of diet sodas over regular. Always have. And my favorite diet soda is Diet a and W root beer. I'm addicted. Number 18. Um, when I was in junior high school, I had a problem with cutting my hair. Um, not just my hair up here, but I actually shaved off my eyebrows and cut off my eyelashes. I cannot explain to you why I did these things. I only did it once because if you've ever shut off shaved off your eyebrows and cut off your eyelashes like I'm sure most of you have you know what it looks like um but I did that and I also cut my bangs I decided I wanted bangs and my mother wouldn't let me have them so I cut them myself and I cut them like up here so my bangs were like right here that short and she made me go to school never did it again um number 19 I've been mistaken for the singer Jill Scott twice to the point where people freaked out because they thought I was her. Um, the first time was on a cruise ship with my girlfriends. We went to Cozumel, Mexico, and we were on the elevator. And this woman got on the elevator and she kept looking at me and looking away and looking at me and looking away. And she was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just, I've never met anybody famous before. And I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I just love your music. And I'm looking at her like, Okay, so who do you think I am? And she says, Jill Scott. And I was like, no, my name is Letitia. <laughs> the second time was in the Atlanta airport. I was coming back. I think I was um, at a layover there from seeing my dad. And I was coming back and this woman walked up to me and she says, I'm sorry. I know you don't want to be bothered, but I just want to tell you, I just love you. And I love your music. And it's a total compliment though because Jill Scott is beautiful so I will take it but I'm most definitely not her but it was funny number 20 we are at the end guys I have a series of moles on my leg on my inner left calf that are in the shape of a smiley face and I will insert a picture of that here um, so yeah, so those are my 20 random facts. I hope you enjoyed them. You probably know a lot more about me than a lot of people that know everything about me. So there you go. That was a really fun tag and I hope everybody does it. So that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye. Hello, floss tube friends and family. Um, it's Letitia. I am back on uh, Monday, July 3rd. It is the day before um the fourth of july independence day in the united states so happy fourth um i am off today so for me this is a very long weekend and i'm loving every minute of it um and today 
I am relaxing just as hard as I possibly can. Um, not really, I'm doing laundry, but whatever. Getting some stitching in too. Um, but I am just chilling out, relaxing, have on my Mr. Rogers sweater. And I don't have any makeup on. I think this is the first time I came to um, get got in front of the camera all natural. So here we are. Um, but today, I want to show you, I've done a lot of recording over the last few days. So um, I'm going to have two videos up within, well, actually, three videos up within four days, which I think is a record for me. I just posted a video of um, my first time hand dyeing some fabric, which I'm going to show you today. I think it came out very well. I'm going to show you, um, again, the project that I'm going to use for it. So I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but first I wanted to talk about something I mentioned on my last video that Carolina asked about, which was stitch witchery. So I'm not sure. She said she's never heard of it before and asked me how, what it was for. So I thought I would talk about this for those of you like me who either have a sewing machine in the garage that they're too lazy to go and get and bring upstairs or don't have a sewing machine. If you worry about surging edges, this may be a lifesaver for you. I've been using this for years, 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 years. And what you do with this, this is a fusible web. So this is the quarter inch width. It comes in all different sizes, but the quarter inch is a good width. Um, and what you do is you take a strip of this, about the length of the edge of your fabric, and you will place it like right here above the very top edge. And you would fold it over so you don't see that web anymore. And you iron. You don't iron the web, you iron like the web would be right in here. You put the strip right here and you just kind of pulled it over so you create a hem and you just iron and it fuses these two pieces of fabric together so you have this nice clean edge that will never come undone. So to me it's better than surging. The only opportunity cost is if you don't have a big enough piece of fabric you might lose you know about a half an inch of selvage um, that you might have had otherwise if you surged it. But if you have a really big piece of fabric it takes as long as it'll take to iron this length of fabric. Um, so that's the fusible web. I've used this for years. I've never had a problem, never have a problem with, um, as long as you measure properly, losing fabric. But if I'm lazy, if I'm lazy, I have been known to use masking tape or duct tape. I am one of those people that will use whatever is handy. Um, but this gives you a very clean edge, so highly recommend it. It's only a couple of dollars at your local Joann's and Michael's. Michael's has it in the Notion section, um, as well as Joann's. Mm -mm, I have that backwards. Joann's has this in the Notion section. I don't know if Michael's has it because Michael's doesn't sell fabric, but definitely Joann's. So give that a go. It might be an excellent option for those of you that don't like whip stitching your edges or don't want to use a sewing machine or don't have a sewing machine. It's a great option. Um, so there you go, stitch witchery. On to the fun stuff. So yesterday, like I said, um, I came across a piece of 40 count white linen that I had. I think I got it from the clearance section of um, 123 Stitch because I would never order a piece of 40 count white linen. I think I got it because it was on a crazy clearance price. Um, but it was a fat half and I had it, and I had some tan writ dye, one hand, um, and my husband was going to Walmart and I asked him to pick up some light gray um, dye because I was going to experiment with dyeing, and the reason why I was going to do that was for the Castles in the Air project um, that I believe I showed earlier in this video, or maybe it was my last one, no because I just went to the LNS on Saturday. So earlier in this video, I showed the castles in the air, and I had fabric for it, um, and I was tossing the coin between light gray and the sand dune. And I posted it on Facebook, and by far the light gray went out, which I loved. My issue with the light gray was that it was a 28 count Joblin. And castles in the air, for some reason, I thought that this was one of those BAP projects. I thought it was gonna be huge. And it wasn't. 
So for 28 count 1 over 1, which is what I was intending to do it on, it literally would have been like 8 inches by 7 inches or something around there. It, it would have been crazy small, um, which would have been painful for me to do. And in my opinion, it would have lost a lot of the detail. So I didn't want to do that small. So I decided I did want to do the 36 count, which was what the sand dune was. But I still like the gray color better. Enter the 40 count piece of white linen. I decided I was going to dye it myself and see what came up, see what I came up with. So I posted the tutorial earlier today. I posted the pictures on my Facebook yesterday. And people really seemed to love the outcome as did I. Now the pictures that I posted um, were a little bit darker than what it actually is. So I'm going to show it to you today. Um, the fabric came out a beautiful silvery gray with touches of light gray and tan modeling. It really, really came out beautifully. And this was actually, I'll just hold this up or maybe even fold it over so you can see it a little better. This was actually, this came out, this actually sat in the, um, in the dye for only 10 minutes. So on the package it said 30, but I didn't want it to be too dark, so I pulled it out after 30 minutes and it really, I shocked myself. It came out a little darker than I wanted it to. Like if it was more like this patch of gray right here, this really light gray, I would have loved it. It would have been perfect um, for castles in the air. But then when I posted it on Facebook, Emily said peacock fabric and I just was like oh my god the peacock and this is the Courtney collection peacock that I showed in my last video that she gave me for my birthday so when she posted that I said oh my god let me run to the cross stitch calculator so I pulled out the pattern to see the stitch count and would you believe that the pattern calls for a 40 count linen in silver fur you guys 40 count linen and it's silvery gray. it was it was like a serendipitous moment it was meant to be so I was so excited so I told her I said well there you go now I just have to wait to get my package from one two three stitch to see if those Havana threads matched up with what I had in mind because if y'all recall I ordered the Havana dinky dies and I ordered it based off of the picture online, which can always be very deceiving. But I not only looked on the picture that they had on 1, 2, 3 stitch, but I went to the Dinky Dyes website to look at what it looked like. And I saw purples and greens and turquoise. And um, I'm hoping. It's sitting right next to me. Um, I got my package today, but I thought it would be great fun to open it together. So you'll be seeing it for the first time just like I will. So that's exciting. I still don't know what it looks like. So anyway, um, that's the fabric. And I loved it so much. And if you watched my video, the hand dyed fabric tutorial, like you will see, I stumbled and bumbled through that thing. I had never done that before. So my measuring, it was, I just went rogue. I just kind of, a little pour here, a little pour there. That's what I did. And you see what I came up with. But I think the secret was and scrunching up the fabric so tight, so tight in this tight little ball, the modeling comes because the liquid wouldn't reach all areas of the fabric. And I think that's why the marbling came out so beautifully. But it's absolutely perfect and I'm tickled pink. Um, now the only thing is, if you recall in my last video too, I said I didn't want to order um, the half yard of fabric that this would call for because I wasn't looking for 40 count fabric. I think I was looking for like 32 count for the peacock or something like that. Um, or even 36 count. I never bothered to look at what the pattern called for. I was just measuring based off the stitch count. So because of the price of the half yard of linen that I thought I was gonna need, I ended up getting 18 count Ada in the colorway shale. 
So now I have a half yard of shale in this fabric. So I'm gonna look at it and determine if I wanna keep it or if I wanna send it back. Um, so without further ado, first I'm gonna take a drink because I'm thirsty. You know, last time I had a coughing fit um, because my throat got really dry. So, opening up the package. Shale is very purple. It's like a lavender color. I just saw the Havana. Mm, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> this is the shale. I don't know if it's showing up the way that it should. It's kind of like, yeah, that's about right, I think. It's like a lavender. I don't know why I thought it was going to be a gray. And I think somebody just said that people are always surprised about the color of shale. I think it was Emily. That people are always surprised by the color of shale because it's purple. I think it was Emily that said that, and she's right. But it's like a dusty lavender color. But it's really pretty. I'm not mad at it. But you know what the funny thing is? Now that I did this, and I look at this, I could have done this. And I think I'm going to do it again. That's the exciting part about it. If you guys watched the last video that I did, the tutorial, I highly encourage you to take a stab at it because I think everybody will be shocked at how easy it was. And not for nothing, I mean, I'm looking at the modeling on the linen and the modeling on this fabric that was done by Big Picture This Plus. I am in no way comparing myself to Picture This Plus, but I'm saying it's the same effect. Just saying. And it was not difficult. And that was from a novice dyer. The only thing I've ever done in my life was like tie dye t-shirts when I was in middle school, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at what I did and I know exactly how they did it. You scrunch up that fabric. So that's shale. It's very pretty. I will keep it. <sighs> but let's talk about Havana. So Got some cute snap replacement covers. Those fun, funky colors. Because I keep breaking mine. Got some thread magic. Never used this before, but I keep hearing that people like this type of container with the openings in it better than Thread Heaven. So I thought I would give that a try. Um, I got for the black part of the peacock, because remember I said I'm keeping the integrity of. Um, the frame of the pattern and the body of the peacock and I'm still doing that in black so I got some dinky dyes in black coral wait a minute dinky dyes in black coral and because it's a 40 count I'm only using one strand but the black coral it's black but it's like an ashy black if that makes sense um, Kind of like a dusty black, not a true black, which I kind of like. I, don't, I kind of like that. Um, Havana. I got the Karen Water Lilies. I think I was saying dinky dyes before. And I was thinking of the black coral. Havana is Karen Water Lilies. And you guys, it is exactly what I was hoping it would be. Is that not the tail of a peacock? Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. If you guys weren't here right now, I probably would have squealed. Um, I'm so excited. Um, and I also got some turquoise blending filament because throughout the tail of the peacock, I'm going to blend in one strand of the blending filament so the tail has a little bit of a shimmer. Um, but let's look at this all together. Emily, I might be starting this tonight. Um, here is, oh, look at that, guys, my black peacock, and there's his tail with the shiny turquoise that'll go in there. If this is not showing up properly, like I'm hoping that it would, I think that's about right. 
It's got green, turquoise, purple. Um, like a lavender a little bit in there. A little bit of a dusty blue. It's definitely a peacock's tail. It's like it was meant to be. Thank you so much for this pattern, Emily. I am so excited. Because of this, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited when things turn out the way that you envision them. There's my peacock, guys. Emily, I'm about to send you a picture right now. Because she's waiting to see what it looks like, too. <sighs> and what's this other thing in here? I don't even know what I ordered. Oh. Um, <laughs> I lost half of my beeswax holder. That I put my thread heaven in so I bought another one and these were for somebody that has a full set of TMC somehow I'm missing three colors that I needed for my Mirabilia so there you go that's my one two three stitch order so because I um, recorded so much over the weekend with my adventures at my LNS and um, Oh yeah, I did the 20 random things tag. That too. Because of all of that, this is now going to be over an hour at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this stuff and upload it. And maybe for you guys that will be home chilling tomorrow, like me, stitching pretty much all day. Maybe there will be another Crafty Curator video for you to watch. Thank you so much, everybody that commented on the fabric yesterday when I posted it. I am so happy with how it turned out. Um, like, I'm really going to look through some of the hand-dyed fabrics that I have and see if I don't want to keep going with this. Obviously, no, I'm not starting any type of online business or anything like that. I'm saying maybe I can save some money by not ordering a fabric of the month every month and try it myself. Now, if it were something with like some of the richer, darker colors, like if I wanted a midnight blue or um, a royal purple, that I might trust to some of um, the more experienced fabric dyers. But if I want something like a pale lavender or a gray or whatever color, I now know that I can do it. So I encourage you to watch that video because you can do it too. And it saves a lot of money. So I hope that you... Oh, let me show you this. A little bit of progress on my life after death since yesterday. Not a lot. I've been doing laundry and other things, so didn't get a whole lot done. But I'm loving how it's turning out. There's my variegated dinky dyes olive green in the stem there, in the leaves. Looks like a dandelion, doesn't it? Looks exactly like a dandelion. <laughs> That's all I got, folks. So happy stitching. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying everything that you're seeing as much as I enjoy watching all of you. Um, the Bearded Stitcher is back, did you know? And also Simon's Stitches. Simon's Stitches, he's brand new. Brand making new. I found him today, and he only had um, 75, describe, 75 subscribers so far. But his second video, it is so funny. It features... The guest star of that video is a little kitten named Gracie, and Gracie is a hot mess. And if you're a cat person, it's the cutest thing you'll ever see. And if you're not a cat person, it might freak you out. But that's what kittens do. Not all of them. Gracie's, Gracie's a little special. Um, but I encourage you to go pay him a visit. Um, he's an avid stitcher. He's been stitching for about 30 years, and if for no other reason, go see Gracie, because it's funny. Um, but thank you guys for watching, and I'm going to wrap this up and upload it, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Happy stitching.